My brothers and sisters, how much faith did you have in Utah before this chapter dropped? And man, can I even call this a chapter? This was basically like a preview for the next chapter. And I must say it is looking very rough for Utah right now. Currently, the quality and pacing of this chapter suffered from Gege's health as he is sick and we're talking almost a three week break with the next chapter dropping and returning around the 27th of this month of June. But my God, this situation really sucks. And almost nothing happened in this chapter and from what did happen is not so good news and maybe even some inconsistencies involved. So right off the bat, we need to analyze Yuta's performance versus Sukuna. And you know what this chapter is proving? Yuta is not that guy. Unfortunately, he does not at all have the same aura that Gojo does. And really with Gojo, that's the only comparison we need to make because Yuta is literally Gojo. He trained with Gojo and he weaponized Gojo, yet he's not quite Gojo. The one thing Yuta was exceptional at was his use of the Unlimited Void Domain expansion. He can match Gojo's level when it came to his barrier technique, and that's nothing to scoff at because this move is carrying hard right now, and it's the one reason why Yuji and Toto are not dead right now. In the same sense, Yuta can use Gojo's strategy to shrink Unlimited Void's barrier and increase the density of the domain so so that it can withstand the malevolent shrine slashes hitting it from the outside. Yuta actually did soul switch training with Gojo over the time skip in order to improve his own barrier technique. So at the very least, now with Sukuna's weakened condition, even Yuta should be able to last against Sukuna. However, Sukuna made another condition for malevolent shrine. Yes, likely another vow involving his barrier technique. Since he narrowed down the 200 meter radius of malevolent shrine down to the size of Unlimited Void's barrier to surround the actual domain, the 99 second time limit is just completely gone now. I'm gonna tell you right now, that little detail is just something Sukuna decided in that moment. Not that it's complete BS, although that's what it feels like. However, when he shrunk the domain expansion's range, there's almost no drawbacks considering Sukuna's condition right now. In fact, this works out even better because the slashes are more focused and there is no loss in output or efficiency. What Sukuna technically sacrificed really is the ability to use the furnace freely and the 200 meter radius of the domain expansion. So now with this incomplete malevolent shrine, it's performing with the same feats in the same level as in Gojo's battle with zero consequences, no time limit, no loss in output, and no cursed energy lost. We don't even understand what loophole that Yuji mentioned because now Sukuna just eliminated the one thing that made his domain expansion nerf. And from what we are about to see, domain expansion is not the only thing that Sukuna can keep up with. Now that the curse techniques have canceled out in three Three minutes, Yuta has to use Gojo's strategy to basically beat up Sukuna in these three minutes to win the domain expansion clash. Now, on the other hand, Sukuna plans to destroy the unlimited void before those three minutes are up, then win, expand his malevolent shrine, and kill everyone. So it's basically up to Yuta now if everyone is going to live. So now that we've gotten this far, how's Yuta's plan working out? Will he be like his sensei, solo Sukuna, run the ones, and actually give him a challenge? Yeah. Uh, no. Yuta has no hands in this chapter, and he did not land a hit. He tries to use the Limitless Curse technique, probably laps blue. However, Sukuna blitzes in on him, gets in his face, parries Yuta's punch with his amputated arm, then punches the crap out of him. Not a one-piece, but a two-piece combo with one hand no less. Mind you, Sukuna has one working hand. He's literally crippled, nerfed, and the weakest that he's been after the fight with Gojo, and he did this to Yuta in Gojo. Gojo's body. Yuta actually confirms that Sukuna uses domain amplification and easily passed through the limitless. And it was only because Yuta was not privy to what happened inside the Gojo versus Sukuna domain. And he was in for quite a shock when he found out Sukuna can actually use domain amplification while within the domain expansion. And this statement suggests that Kenjaku's curse technique would not allow the user to actually read the body's memories. But hold on, the fanbook says that the curse technique does allow that it does allow the user to inherit their memories so it's inconsistent and that would conflict with what's already been proven unless it's just flat out wrong but i cannot believe yuta took gojo's body and now he's getting beat by a crippled 
and nerfed version of Sukuna with one arm. Gojo should have taught him how to actually throw hands because even Yuji could 1v1 Sukuna and actually be competent hand to hand. And we don't know if it's going to continue like this or if this is just a one off thing, but I 100% do know that Gojo would not be done like this. Gojo was never hit as easily as Yuta was, and even considering domain amplification, Sukuna easily bypassed infinity like nothing. There wasn't even a clash between amplification and the curse technique like there is with Gojo. Gojo was fighting Agito, Maharaga, and Sukuno one armed, and he still managed to find a way. Throughout Gojo's entire fight with Sukuna, he was hit only a handful of times, and he was never an easy opponent for Sukuna to engage hand to hand with. Gojo threw hands when he got jumped. He threw hands when his curse technique was burned out. He threw hands even when he got damaged severely. Gojo's battle prowess is perfect. At times, it even matches or even surpasses Sukuna's, but this chapter certainly does not express that same aura. All I see is that Yuta is making mistakes and having a hard time. It's honestly ignorance on Yuta's part because of how he allowed himself to get caught off guard. He could not use his curse technique to his advantage. If anything, that blue helped Sukuna to close in and pull him in. And even his use of infinity is just sorry if Sukuna can just as easily put hands on him with amplification. And some of you may think this is a little too critical. However, this is important because we don't actually have time for Yuta to learn how to do these things. He needs to actually actually beat Sukuna hand to hand and damage him severely or else everyone will die. And as soon as he started this plan in this battle, he instantly is on the back foot getting beat by Sukuna. It's not a good look. To be honest, depending on what translation you trust, the situation with Yuta not knowing about Sukuna's amplification was kind of weird because it was actually broadcasted that Sukuna literally said and he confirmed he was using domain amplification while inside of Gojo's domain. So in Yuta's case, he just might have not been paying enough attention if he was caught off guard by Sukuna's punch. The TCB translation actually makes it seem like Sukuna said that domain amplification was unable to be used however it's not exactly worded correctly it's like while he did not use domain amplification he did use 10 shadows to adapt not that he's completely unable to use it but that he cannot use it while adapting with megami's 10 shadows at the end of the chapter we see yuta's dead body with a fully manifested rika sobbing but with the way this is portrayed it does not make it look good at all in fact it's incredibly depressing and now we have to wait three weeks to see what get get cooked because at the moment he just left us with a kitchen fire then called it a day i think it's interesting that rika is fully manifested but not with yuta's brain because that tells me that the curse technique has been fully activated but there's no way to actually know what happens when the connection runs out the ring is still on yuta's corpse and rika is choosing to stay with the body rather than helping out the real yuta so it's likely that Yuta abandoned his curse technique and now this glitch has created a situation that even Yuta is not sure what's going to happen next. But at the very least, I think this confirms that Yuta will not use anything besides Gojo's limitless curse technique. There possibly is a chance for Yuta to survive and maybe go back to his body, but given his decision to become that monster, he has to significantly damage Sukuna or change the course of this fight in some way. And I do not think that that will come without sacrifice. I fully expect another student to die, and Yuta is the number one candidate given his importance during the Shinjuku arc. It's super wishful thinking that he would just go back to his body without a hitch, and permanently living inside of Gojo's body is very off-putting. But depending on how Gege writes this, he could make a satisfactory conclusion for Yuta's character. Gege Akutami is very sick, guys, and this chapter really does show that. The chapter was short. There are serious inconsistencies that make me rethink multiple panels of translations and issues regarding those translations and the Yuta situation is just bad. Nothing good happened this chapter and it gives us no real hope for the future other than to trust Gege is better than to just leave us with this. Gege had seven pages to work with and he managed to glaze Sukuna and make Yuta look even worse. It's crazy, Yuta's plan is not for nothing. It's not just for Yuta to get killed and Sukuna to just move on. Gojo's character is too important for that. It holds too much weight. 
and this fight with Sukuna has been built up more than enough for Sukuna to suffer consequences from this entire battle. Sukuna is nerfed to the ground, apparently with no 10 shadows and no world slash, nothing except for his base curse technique and domain expansion. Yet somehow Sukuna is flawlessly finding a solution to every problem before him and I seriously think that this fight with Yuta has to be the last straw. This is just a strange and weird chapter that wasn't really all that good, but that's what I think. Please tell me what you brothers and sisters think in the comments. And also how Yuta can salvage this. Hell, how can Gege salvage any of this situation? Because at this point, the sorcerers need to start locking down Sukuna. So much work has been put in to take him down and I seriously doubt that when it comes down to it, that he's just going to win and get things his way. So I honestly think that Yuta will turn things around simply because he has the power to change things and he has become the monster so he has to live up to it. But anyways, my brothers and sisters, look forward to more discussions during these break weeks, and I will see you awesome brothers and sisters in the next one. Bye-bye.